Moving averages. This is what we're going to use today to time our trades. Very, very important stuff. Okay, they are lagging. Okay, they're not going to tell you what's going to happen in the future. Okay, they're not a crystal ball. But they do tell you important information. They tell you what has happened. Now, the past doesn't always predict the future, but the past is important. Okay, so they do lag. However, because you can measure what has happened, you have a reasonable assurity of what could happen in the near future, and that's called a trade plan, right? So, um, so what, we, what we're going to do is look at the moving averages, see how they described what has happened. We're going to be able to then differentiate the difference between price action and market action, which is really, really important. Okay? Again, we're going to differentiate between market action, the overall market forces, let's say, of the day, and then we're going to look at price action, which is what's happening in the moment. So they're, they're looking at the same um, price and time data, but at two different uh, points of view. And I'll show you, if you can line them up, you have a better chance of success. Now, before we go any farther, you're going to have to understand what my charts look like and what, the, what they mean, okay? What I look at, first of all, is speed of the market. That's the market action. I use 2155 EMAs. Remember, these are, we're using moving averages, all right? I use 2155. You can use 2060. I, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter. Don't get hooked on looking for a magic formula, okay? I'm just using medium-term moving averages. I like 2155. Now, for price action, or what I call momentum, we look at the 5, 8 EMA, and the 8 is an SMA, but uh, again, you don't have to get uh, too focused on that. It doesn't really matter. I'm using short-term moving averages. That's all that, that matters. They, they cross a lot because they're, they're measuring things in the short term. Uh, for trend, I use 200 EMA. We're not going to talk about that today. For volatility, I use Bollinger Bands at two standard deviations. Again, we're not really going to talk about that today. And for oscillators, uh, I use MACD set at 21.55.8 and Stochastic set at 8.35. Now, again, we're not going to talk about those today. What we are going to talk about is how to align up price action with, uh, with market action using these moving averages. Now, notice how my, uh, the common thread or the common denominator between all my uh, chart setups and my, all my indicator setups are Fibonacci. Fibonacci numbers. So there is some sort of divine harmony in here, but you can, again, just find what works for you and that's, you know, keep doing that. So let's talk about uh, what these look like. Now the first thing that we're going to look at is market action, okay? And the orange line and the blue line, all right? The orange line is a 21 EMA and the blue line is a 55 EMA. Again, what this represents is market action. Now, because they're medium-term moving averages, let's say you're looking at a 15-minute chart. Uh, in fact, you are looking at a 15-minute chart. looks like a pound, dollar, 15-minute. Um, they don't cross that often. They're medium-term. They're really slow, okay? Uh, again, uh, the 21 EMA is, is showing you a moving average of 21 candles, and the 55 EMA is a moving average of 55 candles. So you know what? On, on some days, you'll find that this may only cross once or twice, okay, which is great. This is, I use the 2155 if I'm swing trading. See, ideally, you can get, a, get in near the top of the market, ride it all day, and then get out at the bottom of the market. Well, that's where, you know, literally, if you're getting in at the top and out at the bottom, that's the market, right? That's what you're trading, the market. There, you don't need to be concerned with price in that situation, that you're trading the market. So that's, that's how I measure market action. And now, price action, remember, it's short term. I call it momentum, in the moment. What is price doing now? And for that, I use the 5 EMA and 8 SMA. And you can see they cross a lot more, don't they? They cross a lot more all the time. They cross constantly, right? But that's, that's what happens with price. Now, if I back up again, here's, here's, um, 
here, here's a uh, 2155 cross, here's a 2155 cross. It doesn't happen very often, right? See, that's, that's what's powerful about the market. It shows you direction if you use it right. Now, how many times have you seen, like, let's say the market falls, like in this example? Okay, the market falls. Let's say, you know, somebody asks you, hey, so how did trading go? And you said, well, you know, uh, the dollar fell today. Yeah, but you know what? When the market falls, we know that the definition of, of a falling market is a series of lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high on and on and on, right? So even if the market is down, right, market, if the market is down, price can still go up. In fact, price goes up all the time in a down market. So that's why I want to separate the two. Measure what's happening in the market, and perhaps I can make a decision on what I want to do throughout the day. See, that decision is called a trade plan. What if the market's falling based on what I see the 2155 doing? I could, early in the day, I could say, well, look, the market is down. So I want to look for reasons to short. Well, what's a reason to short? Well, how about pull the trigger and sell the currency pair every time price moves to the downside? That's the whole premise of what I'm, of what I'm showing you. Remember, I'm going to show you live charts in a little bit. Okay, So that's what my chart looks like on any given day. There's, uh, there's my oscillators down here and all that kind of stuff. But, and then there's that trend I talked about. But the bottom line, when you put it all together, it looks like a lot of lines, but it's not. Okay, You're seeing this for the first time, so you might say, oh my goodness, Wayne, look at all these lines. Well, you know what? That's not what I'm looking at. The first thing I look at is the 2155 cross. And I say, technically speaking, the market is down now, so I want to look for reasons to short. Okay, and uh, let me show you how to do all of this. Okay, now a couple of things here. When it comes to price and market action, we are using moving averages, right? Now, the steeper the angle and the wider the separation between the two moving averages, whether it's price action or market action, doesn't matter. Uh, the, the, the angle and separation of the two moving averages the greater it is and the steeper it is shows um, stronger. Okay, so so again, if the 5.8 is is drop, dropping straight down, there's a good separation between the moving averages. You should be confident in the moment that price is falling. And, well, you certainly don't want to go long when price is falling. Now, when you see a lot of crossing of the moving averages, that's called braiding. You know, like a girl's hair, one crosses over and another over and another over and another over and another over, cross, 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 cross. Uh, that, that's a sign of either weak momentum or a weak market. You don't know what's going on. You have no direction, no nothing, no momentum. That's your, that's your opportunity to do th two things, either lose money or not trade. Okay, let's see if I go back. Um, okay, so for example, in here, you know, there, there's uh, not a lot going on, right? As compared to down in here, we got a nice angle and separation between the 2155. So the market's falling, and it's falling quickly, and you should be confident in shorting. And then, of course, the, like the angle and separation here between the 58. You should be shorting, and you should be confident in staying short. You certainly wouldn't be thinking long. So that's what that's all about. Okay, so what you're looking for is powerful market action. Okay, good angle and separation between the 2155 to set you up for the day. You're like, aha, the market is up today, I want to buy. Or you say, aha, gag Zeus. <laughs> All right, the market's down, I want to look for reasons to short. And then once you have that established, which is a trade plan, then you look for reasons. Okay, so, um, so you look for things like 5A crosses momentum of price in the same direction of the of the powerful market forces that's that's your best now also when you're in the short term you you see things like support and resistance in your way and then you say oh well i don't know if it's going to break well see that's where it's key to really reading your charts if you have strong momentum right good angle and separation between the 58 you're likely to break those support and resistance lines and you just keep going in the direction the market wants you to um, but if you have weak Let's say the the five eight is crossing a lot, right? And you're up against support, and you're losing angle and separation between the twenty one fifty five. 
you know what, you're not going to break support. It's going to hold and possibly reverse. You should at least recognize that and adapt. Okay? Okay, so again, market action, what we're looking at is speed of the market. Uh, we use uh, medium-term moving averages. And what you're also asking is, based on the 2155, are we range-bound? If we're range-bound, you're probably going to see things like the 2155 crossing a lot. That means you're range-bound. Now, if you're a scalper, what you can do is then identify support and resistance and, you know, sell at the top and buy at the at support and sell at resistance and buy at support. That's tricky. You have to be an advanced trader for that. If uh, a conservative trader would say, wow, we're range bound. There's no trend. There's no market direction. There's no nothing. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sit on my hands and not lose money. Okay. Now, if, if the market is trending, so you have, let's say, uh, a good uh, cross like this, and you have good angle and separation to the upside, then yeah, you know what? Then you want to get on that trend and ride it as far as you can. Okay, and price action, again, measure of price, uh, short-term moving averages, I like the 5.8, you can use 3.5, 8.13, whatever, and then, of course, you're using this to understand, are we going to break out of a range, are we going to break through support resistance, and, of course, we're using the, the 5.8 cross to get in the same direction as the 21.55 cross, and uh, what we're doing is aligning price action with market action for the best probability of success. Okay, you can trade against the market, but it's not as good as trading with the market. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the live charts. Yeah, baby, let's go to the live charts. What you're looking at here is the pound dollar. This is live. Uh, you're looking at the MT4 charts provided by FXCM. You know, the prices are moving. This is the real deal. This is happening right now. On the left, I have a 15-minute chart. In the middle, I have a one-minute chart. On the, on the right, I have a one-hour chart with, uh, with pivot points. And uh, let's stick to the 15-minute chart right now. Uh, again, this is the pound dollar. And uh, what's the first thing I look for? I say to myself, hmm, Wayne, what direction is the market today? Well, look, over here we have a 2155 cross. It looks like it happened yesterday or so. Nice, 2155 cross to the downside. The 21 is below the 55. Technically speaking, the market is down. Fantastic. So what do I do with this information? Well, ideally now, what I try to do is line up price action in the same direction as the market. So the market's down, so I'm looking for reasons to short. Well, how do I determine that? Well, how about things like, mm, how about a 5.8 cross to the downside? Remember, price in the moment. All right, so how about in here? almost got a 2155 cross to the upside. The reason it didn't cross up is look at that trend. We didn't cover it today, but the trend also has been pulled from neutral to down. So in any case, we get a downward action, price waits for the moving averages to catch up, and then all of a sudden it kicks down again. So anyways, here we're, we're, uh, we're getting um, a greater angle and separation between the 2155. What does that mean? Well, the market's falling again, and it's picking up its pace, all right? So in here, when it's really, really narrow, it's less ideal because of the, the diminished angled separation between the, the 2155, and then it picks up again. So once you are confident that now the market is falling in the same direction as trend, now what you want to do is take, how about, five, eight crosses to the downside on this. How many times does it cross? Well crossed here, there's your opportunity to short. It crossed here, okay, actually let me draw this differently so it's easier to see. Okay, there's an obvious cross, all right? Here's an obvious 5-8 cross. Here's an obvious 5-8 cross. Here is an obvious 5-8 cross. Here is an obvious 5-8 cross. <laughs> Sorry, these are terrible arrows. And then all of a sudden in here, we're getting all kinds of crossing and braiding. And this is probably your sign right now um, to uh, maybe take some profit off the table 
that things are maybe going to change. And the reason for it is it's uh, 7.45 in the morning right now, and so New York's coming online pretty soon, and maybe they're cashing out um, some of their profits as well, waiting for p potential news today. Also, what you don't see here is the reason that price is wimping out is we're on the weekly S2 reversal pivot point in here and it's that that s2 weekly pivot point is something that hedge fund managers use so a uh, lot of pressure to the downside here and this is a logical place for people to take some profit so that's why you see it wimping out but the most important thing is right in here you know the market's going to fall you know it that's what it means the great angle and separation so whether you traded here here or here let, let's take let's say you got in the, this really late okay I mean, these are 15-minute candles. So let's, so let's say you're a half a day late getting in onto this. At this point here in time, okay, you can see the 2155 is way below the trend. Okay, the market is falling and it's falling quickly. Look at the angle and separation between the 2155. Are you nervous that they're going to cross up? They haven't. Even, they're not even remotely close to each other, and they haven't been for a half a day or so. There is good angle and great separation between uh, the two market measuring moving averages. You're like, holy moly, this thing's falling. It's falling fast. I'm confident it's going to continue falling. I need opportunities to sell when price action is falling as well. Very simple. Test of the 21 and then a 5A cross to the downside. You could easily have shorted there. Okay down she falls maybe there's another opportunity to sell here's another opportunity to sell these are just 5a crosses never once were you nervous about uh, the the 2155 in fact it uh, it started falling faster and faster and faster greater angle and greater separation should make you even more comf uh, confident of shorting and then right here guess what happens for the first time in days guess what we didn't make a lower low take your profit off the table Okay, so even if you're in late here, you're in around 169 and a half, and you're cashing out for profit at let's say 162 and a half. All right, not bad. From 69 and a half to 61 and a half, and it only took one night. Hey, not too bad. Okay, and it all started with there. So uh, there's the pound dollar for you. Uh, how about uh, what do we want to do now? How about uh, pound yen? People love trading that. See, the yen is strong right now, and the dollar is strong right now. So that's why you're getting these big moves. And why am I picking on the dollar, uh, the pound dollar and the pound yen? Well, like I said, the yen is strong right now, and the USD is strong right now based on global money flow and all this kind of stuff, whatever. And the pound happens to be weak. So um, if you were trading... Uh, you know, in the last few days, you should have been short both these pairs. So anyways, look at this. It almost looks like the same chart, right? I kid you not. This is the pound yen 15 minute chart. It is a different chart. All right, 2150 cross, uh, 2155 cross there means technically the market is uh, to the downside. It's falling. Price, uh, price makes a new lower low, breaks out of its previous range, which is in somewhere in here, comes back retest support, old support, now becomes resistance, plus the moving averages move below the, the 200 EMA, which is the trend. And just like last time, right in here, the market begins to fall again, and angle and separation between the 2155 increases. So what are we trying to do now? Technically speaking, the market is falling. What's our goal? What's our trade plan? Short every time price action falls as well. So how do we know price actions to the downside? 5A cross, 5A cross, 5A cross, 5A cross, 5A cross. Which one do you want, right? And how do you know to get out? Look at this. Here's a new lower low. Here's a double bottom. Here's a triple bottom. What happened to the series of lower lows and lower highs and lower lows and lower highs and lower lows and lower highs that, that the 5A cross is giving us? And then all of a sudden we get down here and all of a sudden no lower lows. What's happening? It's wimping out. Why? Again, on the weekly pivot point chart, that's a uh, support pivot, and that's where hedge fund managers are cashing out. And So New York's about to start. Maybe we'll have a new change in direction, or maybe this is going to make a new lower low once we get some new traders in. I don't know. But uh, again, the movie, uh, start with the market, 
right? What direction is the market going? Once you have that established, once you have direction established in the market, then all you have to do is trade in that same direction using price action. So let me pull that PowerPoint presentation back up. There you go. So in summary, what we're looking for is steep angle and separation between the moving averages. doesn't matter whether we're measuring price action or market action. The greater the angle and the greater the separation, the greater your confidence should be. Now, once again, braiding all, lots of crosses, uh, the 5-8 crossing, 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 crossing. And you'll see that in between the markets, let's say, at the close of the New York session, but before Asia opens, you'll get all this kind of braiding. That means there's no momentum whatsoever. You shouldn't be trading and for higher probability the takeaway from this presentation is what you're trying to do is establish market direction first and then line up with price action it's not a guarantee to success I want you to open up a demo account and practice these theories the the strategy on your demo account until you get comfortable measuring both uh, the direction of price and momentum uh, or uh, the, the direction of market and then lining up uh, price momentum with it but uh, just logically speaking price just like water wants to find the path of least resistance so don't trade against the market trade with the market